was walking out one evening late The moon was rising high Headed for the busy side Around this bus and drive The troll man, he walked by Asked me where I'm going Said if the sun set on me there I'd never make it home He said, don't go downtown tonight, there's trouble on the rise. Hey folks, it's Daniel back again with Air Down, and today we're going to work on this Dana 60 truss. This is the Artec low profile truss for a 99 to 04 Super Duty Dana 60. Biggest thing right now, you'll notice there's some fitment issues. I mean, we're pretty straight and square all the way along here. See, we're a little loose there, which means that this isn't sitting down all the way. And then you can see it fits pretty tight right here, but then we start to broaden another big gap right out here, and now it's just ridiculous. I believe this is overbent, and it's not allowing the whole truss to shift this way and to settle this gap over the housing. These pieces here had some hanging down bits that interfered with this spring pad, and I get the feeling that Artec might have wanted me to cut a little off of this casting to put this truss on but I'm not about to do that so I modified the truss to fit the actual axle housing by cutting those tabs off but I'm going to grind some of that away to allow this whole thing to come this way and get us a better fitment because as it is right now this fitment is not going to work for us well now that I don't have that top piece on let's see if we can at least get this piece to fit well this hard edge right here and this hard edge right here on these jigging tabs were real tight against the top, kind of like pushing into that gap real hard. If I shave a tiny bit, like maybe that much off of this one, and like that much off of this one, maybe that top will actually fit better because it might just be wedging against these and not able to sit all the way down. I want to take a, a second to uh, say a big, big thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. Well, this back one, now that I've done all that, this tab in the back here is also hitting a little bit. So I'm gonna trim that one down before I make a judgment on whether or not that was the right idea. All right, I gave that a little trim, let's see. Interesting. So I trimmed the back here, you know, just a sliver. Let's see, this guy, but it's wedged tight up against here again, which tells me that it's still bound up. So I'm gonna hit it just a little bit more. Okay, well now that's fitting fine how it should. And to me, I don't even have to look, I can still feel that gap. So, so far none of that has answered the real question here. Okay, so I went ahead and did this, that side of this tab, this tab, this tab, and this tab. So all the tabs have been trimmed, and that should give us a little bit of ability to move the uprights that direction. Now let's see if it made a difference. There's a gap you can't really see where this upright meets this top plate and it was pretty decent sized gap but now since that trim of these pieces that gap is is perfect it's minimal it's metal on metal trimming those uprights on all uh, spots actually helped quite a bit so i'm glad we started there now to really dial in the rest of it all right i'm about to throw this top plate on again I just shaved this edge and this edge similarly to shaving these tabs. Just a, just a hair, just a little sliver because these were putting a lot of pressure on the end here. So just the way it slapped together was nicer. So that little modification right here and then doing all these tabs has now allowed this truss to sit fully on this tube. Before, this truss was floating off of this tube because it was bound up with these uprights. But now it's sitting flat on the tube and we still have this obnoxious gap right here. 
this is how it wants to sit. It doesn't want to sit rotated any more forward because then the back rises way up. So we need to take some out of the diameter of this cutout so the truss sits lower down. So that's what I'm going to do now. I think I'm just going to get in here and really hog out like, like a quarter inch of material actually. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So something like that would accomplish what we want, I believe. So now I've got to get in here with something and start hogging away. I trimmed that piece out there. You can tell I trim, trimmed probably a little too much and it doesn't sit all the way down, but that's okay. I can fill that gap easily. But now look all along here. The gap has taken up pretty much completely here. I mean, I don't think I can squeeze it any tighter. And the gap is zero, basically all the way over. I had to clamp it over there pretty tight and then clamp it over here because this side wanted to go up, but that's not that big a deal. So just a little work to trim the tabs up, trim the extra length up here, and then trim the diameter out of that end piece. And boom, we got a perfect Artec truss fitment. So now what I'm gonna go along and do is just tack weld in some key spots and then I'm going to pull this thing off and I'm going to weld it up. So what I learned from doing that truss, my uh, ten and a half truss that's currently like a coat hanger, but um, what I learned from doing that one is put these through those holes, squeeze those together and then when you tack them here they won't want to spread and that way you don't have to do so much work to try and get these to stay on the tube. You don't want to fill gaps, especially down such a long length, because that is liable to want to make the axle bend. So the tighter these can fit to the tube, preferably even touching, the better. I'm going to tack it in spots where I won't have, or where I will have beads, where I will start and stop beads, just because I really don't want to have just a tack hanging out. It'd be ugly. So places that I'm going to weld are like from joints like this onward. Anytime the, the truss makes a movement like this or that, I will be welding there. So I'm gonna tack in places like that. Do you mind the ramp? I'll tell you how I do. Keep the money in your pocket and raise it. All right, the truss is tacked up. Let's take it off and see what it looks like. All right, there she is. Now it's just time to weld her together. Okay, about a month has gone by since I've touched this, but uh, it is time to actually weld this guy up, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Silent through the creek, hounds to lose my sin. I went up a tree and I watched them turn, wondering where I went. I take a rest, I hold my breath, I let it simmer down. I climb too high, my wandering eye spied the lights of town. He said, Don't go. There's trouble on the rocks The Batman in the shadows Or the bound to take your life But if you mind the ramble still i tell you how to do Keep your money in your pocket, boy And the razor in your shoe
All right, here is the Dunn front truss. You can see I didn't fully weld it just like the back one. I don't think that you need to fully weld something like this. I think it's just going to cause more problems than it's worth. But I wanted to show you some of the welds. So here we go. The welding game today was right on point, right where I wanted it. Especially this guy. What a pretty weld. You can see I hit it on the inside in just a few key spots. And that was just to keep these tall pieces from warping out so much. That way there was at least something trying to keep the thing inward. But this is the back side here. You can see even on the back side, the game was just on point. Very happy with that. And then this was the last piece we did. It doesn't, it doesn't attach to this piece like the rest of it. So lastly, I went through and I, I did that piece. And uh, that's the complete front truss. Let me put it on the axle and show you. Oh, what a beauty. I re actually really do like the way this Artec truss looks. I've got a couple little fitment gaps, like um, up in here in between the pumpkin and the and the metal, but we'll go through and we'll clean up those gaps, tighten them up real tight, and then weld them. Next stop, got to paint the inside of the truss so I don't rust the inside, and then I've got to uh, weld it to the axle. Me again, it's a fresh new day, and what I've done is painted the inside of this truss just to fill all these little cracks and little crevices. So uh, that way it's sort of like my best bet at rust, at rust prevention. I also sprayed the entire top of the axle housing. So now what I'm going to do is throw this truss back on here, mark with the paint marker where I need to knock the paint off to do the welding knock the bare minimum amount of paint off of uh, the axle and the truss and then just start welding. It's like 10 a.m. so. All right, you can see the witness lines there from everywhere metal touches the truss. Now I'm just going to polish off those areas with a little uh, wire wheel action and then we'll clean the weld areas of the truss and we'll get to welding. Okay, you can kind of see here how all those weld surfaces are shiny now. I did a pretty good job of getting the paint off of the areas where I need to weld. Enough dilly-dallying. Let's get this truss on there. Let's get it welded. How exciting. Just so I know you guys feel my pain, I'm wearing all this stuff because I don't have a better way to protect my arms for welding. It's in the mid 90s right now and it's scheduled to be about 100 today. So I'm already sweating my ass off. Anyway. Time to tickety tick tack the room. Okay, it's time for the main event. And I went over this the last time I did one of these truss videos, but 
it's important to not get this too hot. The fact that I've welded this separate from this is going to keep things from warping pretty well. But I want to do, and you can see Artec already programmed it in, so you want to do short welds. Uh, sit back and enjoy the welding. If you aren't following my channel yet and you're looking for a really good reason why, there is an excellent reason why you should follow my channel. And a set of these is going on that Durango out there, if you can believe it. And also, that's where this axle is going. Thought you might like to see that. Okay, I've got that Nikor wire in here. It's like a nickel iron welding wire meant for welding iron to steel. And uh, what I'm going to do because there is a because there are gaps here, I'm going to put tack welds, big ass, meaty tack welds everywhere I plan to start stop. And then that way it kind of makes a lattice structure to kind of keep things from bending and contracting as I weld. This stuff welds weird, so it, it always sags, and I've learned that sagging is going to make it look ugly. So you always tip the weld to where you're welding straight down, and that, that will help the bead appeal quite a bit. As you can see, I basically soaked this piece in tack welding, and that is what I mean when I say it's going to help create a foundation to keep warping from happening here. So now it's just time to preheat, and I'm going to aim for about 250 degrees all over. That's a big piece of metal to preheat, so I'm going to take a page out of some of the other guys I've seen recently on YouTube, and I'm going to use a weed burner to preheat this and we'll see how well that works. Okay, this mofo is freaking nasty.
Well, it's the next day and it's even hotter than the last day. It's just so sweaty and stuffy out here, but this is done and it's cooled. So I'm going to give it a little spin for your viewing pleasure. All right, here's a close up of some of the welds. You already seen some of the welds on the actual truss, but let's just get a view right down the side of it so you see what's going on. Now you see how good the MIG welds are with the steel on steel, but here is a Nikor bead, and I saw like you know you know the kind of beads, right? That I'm capable of. Here's my Nikor beads. Let's get this one in the sun. You know, not great, for sure. Could be worse. Could be a whole lot better. That one's actually standing up real tall. Hopefully I'm not too close and it's blurry and you guys can actually see. Let's uh, get this around here. So, they didn't show these ones off, but here's the beads on the top. Hold the top plate or the plates into the top there. Now back here with the Nikor beads on the housing, leaving a little bit to be desired for sure. All in all, not bad. And if you've ever watched anybody try to weld cast iron to steel, it's almost never pretty. So I'll say that. Uh, my cast iron to steel beads are probably some of the prettiest on the on YouTube. But it's all because of that Nikor wire, not because I have some grand skill. Anyway, this thing's all cleaned up now and it's ready for paint, so now it's just time to hit it with the old rattle can. When I was walking out one evening late, the moon was rising high. Headed for the river's side Around this fuss and fight Patrol man, he walked by Asked me where I'm going Said if the sun set on me there I'd never make it home He said don't go downtown tonight There's trouble on the ride Batman in the shadows and the bound to take you life. Well, if you mind a ramble, I'll tell you how I do. Keep your money in your pocket and the razor 